If there's any one kind of game that I sincerely miss more than anything else, it is classic styled survival horror games. Everything these days is over the shoulder with third person aiming, like whatever happened to those deliberate angles, the carefully timed scares, and those disorienting camera swings. A lot of modern games at least get the resource management right, but there's something about the old camera, the old aiming, the old menus that I think totally still hold value, even if modern third person cameras are more generally appealing. But these days, generally appealing is all any company has the bravery to do. It is still a solid formula that you could absolutely do more with, and for years now I've been wishing for a modernized version of that kind of thing. That gameplay loop I just can't get enough of. Exploring, gathering resources, and balancing those resources to try and improve the safety of the playing field while preserving your own life. Placing your finger on the trigger as you anxiously wait for that screen transition, just to be greeted by off-screen enemies that you have to hear before you see. You never see it done quite like that anymore, and it's difficult to find many other games from the same period that do it as well as all the cult classics I've already played. So I uh, got pretty freaking excited when people told me about Tormented Souls. It is a classic styled survival horror game from Dual Effect, this indie studio that's based in Chile, and uh, I watched the trailer, it looked exactly like what I've been looking for all these years. Like, wow, I feel like I've had dreams about this game, you know what I mean? Like, this is how I always imagined a modern version of this to look like. It's coming to pretty much every platform now, but back when I first heard about it, it was only on PC and PS5, and I don't really like playing games at the computer desk, but by some miracle, I managed to snag a PS5 on sale this past Black Friday, and buying Tormented Souls was the very first thing I did on it. It came with Ratchet and Clank, but like, I don't know, I've already beaten four of these games, I know how it's gonna go, I know exactly what to expect, I don't give a shit, I wanna see if this is any good, let's play some Tormented Souls, let's see just how well this thing does classic survival horror. Oh, the classic warning, that's a nice touch. Tormented Souls follows Caroline, this young Canadian woman who receives a cryptic envelope from a place called Wildburger Hospital. It's a photo of these twin girls with the message, you think you can abandon us, scribbled on the back. Not gonna lie, it's uh, kinda cool seeing a Canadian setting for once. Horror games always take place in Japan or Europe or the USA, so it's pretty neat seeing something closer to home. I'm going to the Wildburger Hospital in hopes of finding some answers about this strange photo. Yeah, voice acting this game is, uh... What? Is this... my room? None of it really lands at all. I came to Wildburger Mansion seeking information about two girls in a photograph I received in the mail a couple of weeks ago. Talk about a run-on sentence. The writing isn't much better, honestly. I mean, I guess you could argue that's fitting in a way. Like, a lot of these old horror games did have butt voice acting. Okay, let me handle this. But while it's goofy and fun in Resident Evil and weirdly effective in Silent Hill, Radio. What's going on with that radio? This just doesn't really do anything for me. It's not really bad enough to be fun and not really hollow enough to elicit any sort of feeling from me. It just sounds really lackluster. After we arrive at the hospital, we then get conked on the head and then wake up naked, afraid, and missing an eyeball in a big gross tub of spooky goo. I don't know why they didn't put nudity in that warning too. This is, I'm gonna censor that. Okay, so once we get dry and we're clothed, we're then free to explore the hospital. Let's try to figure out what the hell happened to us and where the hell that photo of the twins came from. So, uh, firstly, not really a fan of Carolyn's design. It's just, I don't know, all the belts and the eye patch and the floral pattern on the dress and the big ribbon and the crop jacket. It's, it's just kind of a lot. It's kind of a cluttered design. Like, my gaze feels like a pinball bouncing between detail with nowhere to really rest, if that makes sense. Though, in the first room of the game, you can also find an alternate costume that I actually thought looked a lot better. Apparently, they added this costume in a Halloween update, which kind of makes me wonder if some fans felt the same way and then they maybe added this as a compromise, or maybe I'm just a or who knows. Either way, I'm glad they put it in here because I do much prefer it. Leaving that bathroom throws you right into a world of mystery. Looks a lot more like a museum or some sort of old mansion than it does a hospital. Fancy rugs cover hardwood halls fashioned with expensive sculptures and Baroque paintings with random areas riddled with machinery and medical equipment. Reading some notes, we soon learn that this was a very old mansion that's been repurposed into a hospital and it is a really cool 
cool setting. It sort of combines the iconic settings of Silent Hill and Resident Evil. You know, you got the mansion combined with the hospital, and you even have some of that Dark World stuff too, where everything becomes rusted pipes and metal. Hey buddy, shit gets rusty, all doors locked. It's that OG shit. Everything here is going to be immediately familiar to fans of Silent Hill and the Resident Evil games, the, uh, the old ones at least. There's even tank controls too, and they handle it the same way the RE1 remake does, with the tank controls being on the D-pad and the modern controls being on the stick. This way you're able to seamlessly switch back and forth whenever you want one or the other. Which is good, because that camera jitter that always happens with modern controls on fixed angles like this, it does occur a lot in this game too, as expected, so uh, uh, being able to just hop my thumb over to better orient myself when grabbing an item or running down a hallway or something, it made the gameplay much smoother. Now if they added that fatal frame run button, we'd have the whole package here. The square button does run, they just have to make it also propel you forward, and it would be the perfect classic control scheme for games like this. You can't control the camera in any capacity like you can in Silent Hill. These are strictly fixed angles that'll follow your character automatically. Sometimes I kind of wish I could nudge the camera a little further, like Silent Hill lets ya. It does a pretty good job overall though, and the consistent angles also make the mansion very easy to navigate. Every room is very detailed and they all stand out very well, so even though the map doesn't show you specifically where on it you are, it's still pretty easy to get a feel for the mansion and then remember how to get around. The lack of an arrow telling you where on the map you are kind of reminds me of Siren, which is a kind of a cool feature I haven't seen other horror games do. Honestly, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but it does force you to really take in your surroundings a little better. And I'm not entirely sure if I really would have known the mansion that well if it weren't for that, because by the end of this game, I knew this whole place inside out. And as you go through the game, you'll also unlock a bunch of shortcuts that'll make getting around even easier. Though as much as I do really love the level design and the progression and everything, uh, the late game underground area I did find pretty annoying. Everything here just kind of looks the same, I was running in circles a lot, but uh, uh, thankfully the majority of the game is very well put together. The aiming and shooting is very classic. Holding R1 aims the weapon and you press the face button to fire. Caroline will auto-aim if you're close enough, so it's less about the skill of aiming and popping off headshots and more about the resource management the dodging and running away and learning the layout of your environment to make the most out of your ammo as you escape and shoot back. There's only a handful of weapons you'll get throughout the game. There's a crowbar for your melee, the expected pistol here in the form of a nail gun, and of course the shotgun. Always gotta have the shotgun, good for knocking those guys back. No idea how she made the damn thing out of plumbing she found in the closet, but uh, it's very helpful. Uh, except against this one. Doesn't matter how many times you shoot it, it'll just keep getting up because this is the chaser enemy. That one guy that you can't kill and will start hunting you down halfway through the game. And oh my god, buddy. Oh wow, yeah, let me tell you. Wow, this is just the shittiest chaser of all time. Yeah, its presence is telegraphed the moment you enter the room. If you hear that music, you know it's in there. But wait, no, that's supposed to build the anticipation, right? No, it's to tell you it's in there so you know to leave the room to despawn it. No, oh, yeah, like literally, every time you hear that upon coming in a room, you just know to leave and come back in to get rid of it before it can even come close to you. It is so bogus. Kinda disappointing that they couldn't do something better with this thing. I mean, other games have made really good use of this concept, but I don't know, at least it's a failed idea that doesn't introduce anything frustrating. I'd rather something bad be silly than something bad be obnoxious. Enemies also stay dead permanently, with only key events spawning more in on the rare occasion just to surprise ya. It nails that feeling of getting the most out of your resources. You know, you're switching to the melee weapon and risking in an extra hit at the end to save that bullet that's gonna save your ass later. <laughs> It definitely is not the hardest game of its kind that I've beaten, but it certainly is for the people that really want to do the survival horror. Items are scarce, combat is clunky and requires practice, and there are no difficulty options to make it any easier. Same thing goes for the puzzles too. There's a lot of them, and many of which can be pretty challenging. This ain't no Silent Hill where you can just put the puzzles on easy and go through the game. No, you're gonna have to be interpreting clues from your notes in your environment. You're gonna be doing some poking around in this game. Some of these items are an entire puzzle in themselves, like the, the freaking floppy disk. This was one of the coolest puzzle items I think I've ever used in any horror game, because everything you need is all right here, and you would have no idea unless you had the context of the situation and you were thinking more about it. I was also really impressed by the light world, dark world puzzles. I remember this was something that Silent Hill Origins tried, having a light and dark version of the map and you bounce back and forth, but I felt like in that game it just needlessly doubled the already huge map size and just 
just made the backtracking really annoying. But here they only give you a couple of dark rooms at a time, and that completely eliminates the pacing problem. And the puzzles are really cool here too, like it won't always be super obvious what the Dark World counterpart to something will be until you start gathering the pieces. They are some seriously cool puzzles. Uh, just to give you an example of an earlier one, you read about this heartbeat and it has some sort of significance, so you find the stethoscope, and I thought, well, I don't really know what to do with this thing, there's a statue here, I could try... Oh. So now the question is, what the hell do I do with that heartbeat? Exactly. Expect a lot of stuff like that. I haven't had this much fun solving horror game puzzles since Silent Hill 3, man. Like, I was even busting out a pen and a paper for, like, one or two of them. And I love how actually relevant every item feels, too. Like, the lighter. It's not just for lighting your way through the dark. No, like, if you ever need to light a candle or something, yeah, just use that the same way you'd use any other key item. The crowbar, too. Like, this thing's a weapon. You use it to beat guys' asses with. But the game doesn't forget, yes, you have a crowbar. You could use that to also open something. Many key items will even remain relevant long after the first time you use them. You ever find that funny, how in most games you use some object on one thing and it just disappears forever? In Tormented Souls, that never happens. You're not going to use a hammer on one weirdly specific thing before it dematerializes. You're going to be using that hammer on multiple things throughout the game. It's actually kind of neat. Detail in this game is pretty wild for such a small studio. Character animation isn't really all that great, but it's extremely difficult to give a shit about that after soaking in all of these environments. Wow, the way light pours through the windows into the fog and that warm glow trickling through the hardwood. It is a really gorgeous looking game and the atmosphere is always really effective. They do copy and paste objects quite a bit though, but it is as understandable as it is noticeable. They clearly wanted to go for a very cluttered look. You know, you're walking through this mansion that's been messily repurposed over the years. You see all these strange things that have stacked up over time into this chaotic, otherworldly combo. You get that feeling of, like, weird, rich cultists abusing their wealth and power to run horrific experiments on human beings. You got these hallways that look expensive as hell, yet they're crawling with abominations. I couldn't imagine the amount of work it would have taken for an indie studio to achieve that look and feel without repeating a lot of objects. It's just not realistic to expect that, so I'm not gonna pretend like it is. I actually really love the monster designs here. They're really freaking freaky. And I love the difference in silhouettes for all the different enemy types too. Like, it's just a bunch of messed up people, you know, experimented on in different ways, yet they managed to make the whole cast of weirdos come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them have distinct sounds to telegraph their presence too. Like, oh no, the clang in a metal, it's a wheelchair guy and I don't have any bullets, I don't wanna go down there. The sound design's pretty good at building anticipation, especially in those moments where you enter a room and it's right off camera, you only know it's there from the sound effect. The sound design overall is pretty cool. The ambience goes to that hollow droning sound that I really love to hear in these kinds of games. It certainly makes the exploration a lot more unnerving. They will occasionally throw a stupid jump scare at you, but overall the grand majority of the scares come more so from the tenseness and stumbling around in the dark. Sometimes you'll have the anticipation, other times you'll walk into a dark room and something is just standing there. No jump, no sound effect, no, like he will just, just be there. It's always so intimidating walking through a dark room and you see something that has not seen you yet and you slowly back away. Ammunition isn't the only thing that's limited here. Saves are something you'll also have to ration. You're not going to be able to cheese it and save every time you see a save point. No, spending one of these means you are satisfied with the amount of guys you've carefully taken out and you don't want to risk dying for another room. And sometimes you got to make that choice knowing very well, it's going to be a little bit before I find another one of these things. Now, I'm always really careful with this sort of thing because I've played a billion of these damn games, so I ended up with a pretty decent amount by the end, but during the entire playthrough, I was actively feeling that if I saved, I should make it count, and I very much appreciated that. Especially right after playing through Kuon, where they hand the things out like candy. Like, I know it's Halloween, but... It's not Halloween. Now, while this game absolutely nails the combat, the puzzles, atmosphere, and exploration, the story does leave a lot to be desired. It's okay, like, uh, the voice acting aside, the story is kind of interesting. You get to uncover the twisted things that they were doing here and how it was affecting people. That was really cool, and uh, getting context all of the weird suits and equipment. That was enough to make me want to keep reading the articles and the notes and stuff. But overall, I did find the plot pretty lackluster and predictable. I mean, it was pretty refreshing to be once again piecing a plot together by reading all of the notes you pick up, like, hey, just like old times. 
But then they spell it all out in a cutscene, which I, I kind of felt really trampled over me wanting to play detective. It felt like a waste of time reading all that material if you're just gonna tell me what happened anyway. I think they really should have held back on all that exposition dumping. You know, let the notes speak to the players that actually care about the story and have the cutscene be a lot more to the point without all that extra explaining and talking. Fleshing out simpler cutscenes with optional supplementary material I think would have worked a lot better, but either way, for what it's worth, the mansion is still a really interesting place to learn about, so at least it has that. Tormented Souls isn't the next huge horror masterpiece or anything, you know, the story's pretty average, the weapon variety's a bit lacking, and the menus could be a little bit more organized and less clunky. There's not really many unlockables, no more extra costumes, and there's only one weapon, and it does feel more like a combination of old ideas than it does anything new or inventive. And because of that, I don't really see it appealing to everybody. Again, we don't really do the fixed angle stop and shoot thing anymore because it is generally less appealing to newer players. The goddamn dude like, as a polished up and streamlined, new and shiny version of that old thing I love so much, Tormented Souls does exactly what it needs to, and being somebody who's played so many of that kind of game and I just want another one that's actually good, it is exactly what I needed. It's a super solid game that executes all of those familiar aspects pretty well. It doesn't feel like it's just copying something without understanding it, but instead more like an actually passionate stab at modernizing that kind of classic gameplay. And with that one free update giving us a new costume and one unlockable weapon, who knows, maybe they'll add more free updates in the future. I'd love to see some unlockable goofy costumes and strange weapons to give the game more replay value. Games more or less on everything, there's Steam, PS4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X, they even have a Switch port planned. If you're watching this video and it's brand new, most of those versions probably aren't out yet, but they will be soon. And oh my god, dude, it is a steal at only 20 bucks. This is just a $20 game. Like seriously, at that price, I gotta say, absolute must play for anybody who likes those old horror games like Fatal Frame, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, or anything similar. And that's really who this game is for. People that are experienced with classic fixed angle survival horror games and just want a modern good version of that kind of thing. The lack of difficulty options doesn't really make it quite as accessible as the games that inspired it, so I wouldn't really recommend it as somebody's first horror game, but fans of that sort of thing will be very happy to know that it does offer just as much challenge as it does scares. It's not a perfect game, but hey, it's everything I wanted for a really long time, and that's pretty sick. Merry Christmas, ho ho ho, Merry Christmas, ho ho ho. Christmas, ho ho ho, Merry 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 Christmas, ho ho ho, and Happy Holidays.